everyone. Uh, as Ming uh, introduced, my name is Zarina, and today we are going to discuss about what is the future of manufacturing. So in today's talk, I will introduce about these following concepts that I have given here. I'll start with what is manufacturing, what are the different types of manufacturing processes, and how would you select a particular process based on the material and the part requirement? What is advanced manufacturing? And we will discuss about additive and subtractive manufacturing. I will also talk about precision manufacturing and the need for this for components that are produced in micro and nano scale. I will also explain about some of the key developments in the field of manufacturing, such as reverse engineering and start manufacturing, smart manufacturing. And I will give a glimpse of the future of manufacturing. So to start with, what is manufacturing? Manufacturing is converting raw material into useful product. It's basically how you would transform your design or your idea to reality. So if you look around you, we basically live in a materialistic world and everything around you is manufactured. It could be Lego blocks or your smartphone, cars or aeroplanes. So when we talk about these products, we don't manufacture the whole product. Instead, every product that I mentioned here is made out of multiple components and we manufacture or fabricate these components which are then assembled together to get the final product. So this manufacturing process that we select for every component will depend on the material of the component and various other um, informations. So what is the relation between the materials and the manufacturing method? There are different types of materials that are available and every component will be manufactured using a particular material. Again, it all depends on the design needs. So there are metals, polymers, ceramics, composites, and many other different types of raw materials that are available. So when it comes to metals, the most commonly used manufacturing methods are casting, forging, and machining. When it is a plastic component made out of polymeric material, injection molding is the widely used manufacturing technique. Similarly, Sintering is the technique for ceramic components. So here, machining. And I have ex I've made an uh, image here of CNC machining, that is computer numerical control machining. Here, the metallic component is machined using the CNC machine based on the design that you have made. This is for the metallic material. We won't do CNC machining of polymeric material because as you have seen, polymeric materials are in the form of these pellets. So we need to form this material if you want a product out of it. As I have shown here, injection molding is the most widely used manufacturing method when it comes to products that are made out of plastics. So in order to get these products, first you will design and manufacture the mold, as you can see here, which will have a core and a cavity. So the cavity and the core will be matched and this polymeric, uh, the pellets will be melted and flown through the gap. This will be mounted in a machine. And then when it solidifies, the final product will be ejected out of the core. As you could see here, this is when the mold is open. You can see the product being solidified and this will be ejected out of the injection mold. When it comes to glass, this is the most common technique that is glass forming. 
in which you convert silica, which is basically sand, into bottles. Die casting is another most widely used manufacturing method for metallic components. Again, similar to injection molding, you will have a die using which you will form the metallic components. This is widely used for mass production. Why? Because you can't machine individual components when you are making them in few hundred thousands. It will produce a lot of waste and also it will be very expensive and time consuming. So we use this technique called near net shape manufacturing where you will produce the primary shape of the component using this die casting technique. As you could see, this is the smartphone body that is made by using the die casting technique, which is the primary manufacturing process. It will be subjected to secondary process called CNC machining just to get the final finish or the dimension of the product. Then it will go through the finishing process where you would add color and all. Moving on to advanced manufacturing. The conventional way of designing used to be hand drawings, which is no longer existing. We use CAD, which is computer aided designing softwares to design the product or the components that we want to make. Not only do you design the product, you can actually visualize and test the 3D image of the product. Usually the CAD softwares are integrated with CAM software, which is computer aided manufacturing. In this case, CNC machining. So here you send the drawing to the CAM software and it will generate the tool path, which is basically the way the, tool, the machine will machine the raw material into a final product. Again, before even you mount the raw material in the actual machine, you can simulate the process to see how it would machine, what are the different tools that will be used, and if there would be any interference that you need to avoid, and how long it would take to machine the particular component. So what I explained just now, it's subtractive manufacturing. So you start from a block, you remove the unwanted material to get the final product. The other technique that is very prominent these days is called additive manufacturing. You might have heard of 3D printing. So here, again, the same way you start with the CAD drawing, but instead of sending to a CNC machine, you would send to a 3D printer. The way the 3D printers work is, for example, here with the polymeric component, the powder will be deposited and fused in layers. That's why it's called additive manufacturing. It adds the material. So as you could compare and see, this will produce almost no waste. And whereas in subtractive manufacturing, the waste is produced in the form of chips. So that's the difference between additive and subtractive manufacturing. And again, what you saw here is a polymeric material, which is the most commonly used 3D printing technique. But it is not confined to just polymeric materials. We also have metal 3D printing technique, where again, the metal powders are deposited layer by layer, and it is fused using laser technique. Another advantage of additive manufacturing is lattice structure 3D printing. As you could see here is a helmet that is printed using 3D printing or additive manufacturing technology. So this lattice structure is a powerful design tool. Generally, if you see any helmets, it will be a solid filled one piece of body. Whereas as you could see here, as a well-designed lattice, you can make the part lighter and stronger and also it can absorb much the impact force much more efficiently. And it is not a one product for all. 
but you could customize this product as per the needs of the end user. This is possible in additive manufacturing. And also additive manufacturing comes as a breakthrough in the bio, in the medical field. These are custom built dentures that are produced by additive manufacturing technique. The next concept that I would explain today is about precision manufacturing. So these precision manufacturing techniques are used if you want to produce or manufacture products that are high precision products that would require demanding tolerances that are tight tolerances in microns. And if you want to create complex geometries with high degree of repeatability and accuracy. These components can be machined only from high precision automated CNC machines. So what are the other alternate for CNC machine? We have conventional machines which are operated by the operators. They literally move the tool against the workpiece. You can't produce this high precision components using those conventional machining methods. One of the concept of precision manufacturing is called single point diamond turning, where you will use single crystal diamonds as the cutting tool to machine metallic components. These kind of mirror finish can only be achieved using the single point diamond tools, which are widely used in the optical industry, you know, for and also for lens arrays, mold inserts and optical assemblies. As you could see, these are machine surfaces. They are not polished. They are machined with this mirror finish. And the surface roughness will be in nanometric range. Precision manufacturing is widely used for producing micro and nanoscale components that are widely used in biomedical and aerospace industry. As you could see, Prostheses used for uh, knee replacement, hip replacement, implants, and other orthotic devices are generally made using this precision manufacturing method. In aerospace industry, this method is used for machining manifolds, bushings, and components that are used in landing gears. Again, these demands high precision and accuracy. Another interesting latest trend in engineering or in manufacturing is called reverse engineering. From what I explained now, you understood that you first need to design a component that will be later manufactured. What if you have a component that you don't have the design? What if you have an out of production part? How would you reproduce this component? This is where the reverse engineering comes into play. See, this is called a 3D scanner. You basically scan the product in order to reproduce the design that will be used to manufacture the component. There are two techniques that you could use here. Either you use a 3D scanner or what we call CMM is called the coordinate measuring machine where the probe will basically touch different the entire component and it will reproduce the drawing for you. This is widely used, as I said, for out of production parts, for rediscovering some lost designs, particularly in historical studies and preservation of old components or products. The latest concept in advanced manufacturing is called smart manufacturing. You might have heard about industry 4.0. In this concept, you bring together all the advanced concepts like date, big data, automation, um, you know, uh, cloud computing, internet of things, cybersecurity, all those things together into the industry that's called smart manufacturing. So what are the advantages of this? It actually would respond in real time. Say in the supply chain, there is a particular component uh, that is missing or there is a delay in the supply. The whole system will respond in real time and adjust itself in order to not um, you know, 
um, make the demand that is required out of the system. And also the entire system is monitored use, using internet connected machineries and sensors. So using the start, a smart manufacturing technique or in industry 4.0, the whole system can be optimized and you could improve the manufacturing process using technology-driven approach and data analytics. So what does the future look like in the field of manufacturing? You can basically build any customized product. I explained about different materials that are available, like metals, polymers, and ceramics. You can actually engineer your own material. You can mix and you can make the material that you want, and you can make manufacture the product. And again, the way 3D printers are booming, it's like a laptop. Everyone will own their own 3D printer, a desktop printer at home, so you can print your own design. As you understood, you need to design the product first. What if you don't know how to design a product? Product designs would be readily available for downloading from cloud. So you can download the part and you can produce the part. You can even engineer the material and make the part that you want. Also, there will be an increasing demand for micro and nanoscale components. That's the future of manufacturing. But having all these available at your hand, you need to be mindful about ethics and sustainability of the products that you would manufacture. So do you want to learn more? If yes, we have two new MSc programs available in UCL. One is on future manufacturing and nanoscale engineering, other on manufacturing with innovation and enterprise. What would you learn from these programs? Or what, what do we offer? We provide technical manufacturing and hands-on skills to the students enrolled in this program. We focus on nano engineering, precision manufacturing, and various advanced characterization techniques, material design, and sustainability. There is provision to work on industry relevant projects. We are not working on hypothetical projects. These are the real world projects that you would be studying and working on. You will be empowered with technical, practical, and professional skills and make, that will make you career ready for the future. So our new UCL East campus is, we are creating a hub for education, culture, art, and commerce in Stratford, which is located in East London. We have nine UCL faculties working across this cutting edge school center, centers for research and innovation. We have nearly 16 new cross-disciplinary and interdisciplinary degree programs. Again, this is part of London's East Bank, a new culture, education, innovation, and entertainment district. 